Good morning Year 3, welcome to this week's spelling lesson with me Mr Bully. Before we get started I just wanted to say well done for all the wonderful work that you've been sending in to us via email. Um, myself and all Year 3 teachers are loving to see the hard work that you're all doing at home uh, and how inventive that you're being in this dif difficult situation the, and the commitment that you're showing to your learning so well done, keep it up. A couple of shout outs, um, because this is a spelling lesson I have been analysing our spelling shed score charts and big shout out to Riley T who is at the top of the year three leaderboard from 3H. Uh, big shout out to Noah in my class 3B and also to Izzy P in my class as well. Well done to you three and I know reading some of the emails from parents that lots of you have been working really hard to get to the top so keep going and you might have the shout out next week. So for today's lesson, use anything that you've got to hand at home, whether that's um, a writing pad and pencil or whether it's a whiteboard and pen. If you want to do it in Sharpies, I don't mind as long as you are getting the practice of the skill that we're looking at today. And just a bit of a disclaimer, if you hear any wild screaming or anything like that from downstairs, please don't panic. It's just my boys probably fighting over fire engines or bulldozers. So, following on from the homophones lesson from last week, your starter task today is to watch what I'm doing and try and figure out what the homophones are in the two tasks that I do now. So our handphone starter, Mr. Bully had to, for the bus, he checked the, of the beans. Our homophone today, hopefully you figured it out as the task was going on. Homophone is weight. Now we've got two different ways that we can spell weight. We have got Weight, and we've also got weight. Now, give yourself 30 seconds, talk to the person that you are working with at home, consider whether this weight should be used here for the weight of the beans, or whether this should be used for waiting for the bus. Which way around should these go? Write these two sentences down in your neatest handwriting and make your decision which one goes in the gap. So it is Star Wars Day today, it is May the 4th, Monday May the 4th, and our learning objective today is to understand the re prefix. Okay? Our steps to success today are
to recognize and write re words. To consider the meaning of the re prefix. And thirdly, to match words containing the re prefix to their meaning, to their definitions. To recognize and write re-words, to consider the meaning of the re-prefix, to match re-words to their definitions. They are our steps to success today. So, the first thing I want you to do as part of our main activity is to take two minutes to write down as many words that you can think of with the re-prefix. Okay, off you go. There's your two minutes, so if you've got any of these words that I write down on your whiteboard as well, give yourself a big pat on the back, and hopefully you've got many more in addition as well. Let's get them right, written down. So hopefully you've got a whiteboard or a piece of paper full of re-words and you've also got more than we've got on here at the moment. Count up how many you've got. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay? So if you've beaten that, very well done to you. Now, the next thing that we need to do is, for our steps to success, is to consider the meaning of the re-prefix. So, if we take this word, first of all, and we think what the root word is within this word. So, reapply. The root word within this word is to apply. Okay? So, as we know, our prefix is re. So, if we take apply, first of all, And consider, consider what that means, so whether we're applying for a job or we're applying for some tickets for a show, let's say that. So we have applied for some tickets, we've been unsuccessful, so we will reapply for the tickets. So if we reapply for the tickets, what does that mean to reapply? 
have a think now, talk to the person that you're working with at home, try and write yourself a definition of what the re-prefix means. It doesn't have to be very long, only a few words. Two, So, hopefully you've had a good chat and you've considered some of these words and what that re prefix does to alter the meaning of the word, the root word. So, we have got re. Okay? Now, the re prefix either means to do something again. So, in this instance, we were applying for those tickets again, the re tells us that we're doing it again, or it can mean back as well. Okay, so if we were to return somewhere, we return, it means that we are going back to where we have just come from. So these are our two options, we're either doing something again, or it means to go back. Now, with your piece of paper or your whiteboard, make sure that you've got it portrait way round, so that we can write a list of 10 words going down the left hand side, and then in a moment we will be providing some definitions to go along with it as well. But for now, all I want you to do in a blue or a black pen, or a pencil is fine, is to write down these root words going down the side of your page. So we're going to start off with do, then we are going to go with fresh, the next one is turn. And then up here, next one, lots of this has been going on during this pandemic, decorate, right there or wrong way, but hey, decorate. What have we got next? Uh, we have got venge, as in vengeance. Venge, we've got view, so to look at something. My phone has just fallen over, excuse that. So I'm not going for take. Number four, stick the phone back into the blue tack. There we go, we're back. Play. Action. And finally, bound. Now, remember, you can pause this video at any time so that you've got the time to do the task that I'm asking you to do. So any time that you need, you need to pause this video. So what I want you to do now is to pause this video, get another pen, and you are going to write our re prefix in front of all of these root words. Off you go.
Okay then, take a seat on the stool. I feel like I should have an acoustic guitar. But anyway, right. We are now thinking about our rewords and we are thinking about the definitions of each of them. So what I'm gonna do on these post-it notes is to write down a definition and each definition is gonna have a number. On your set of words, what you can do once you consider the definition, you can either write out the definition next to it, if you would like to, or you can write the number. So you could write number a number three next to redo if that was the third definition. Okay, so the first one is, I'm gonna put a big number one, to play it again. So there's that keyword again, re, to play it again. I'm just gonna stick it there for now. Well, it might be better if we do it the other way. So to, do, to play it again. Number two, to freshen something up. So there's our number two. I'm just sticking them anywhere at the moment and then we'll consider them. Number three, to appear again. Number four, and this isn't an again one, this is a back one. To get someone back for something they did. Mm. Maybe someone played a prank on you. Maybe mum or dad have played a prank and then you've done a prank back on them. So number four, to get someone back for something they did. Number five. To decorate something again. That's your number five. Number six. To bounce back. Number seven. Mm, interesting one. To give your opinion on something. Give your opinion on something. Stick that there. Number eight. If something makes you jump, this is a, what is it? A re. Number nine. Just check where we're up to. So we've got to play it again, to freshen something up, to appear again, to get someone back for something they did, to decorate something again, to bounce back, to give your opinion on something. If something makes you jump, this is A. So number nine is to go back somewhere. And the last one, number 10, is, ooh, let's have a think, mm. to go, oh no, we've got that one, what's number 10 then, to do something again, mm, there we go, to do something again, to do something again. And I will give you, I'll put a picture on the screen now of all 10 of those options. So what I want you to do is to go through now and hopefully write the numbers down 
next to each of the words, or you can pause the video and write out the definitions next to each of the words. Good luck. Okay, let's have a look then. So, number one was to play it again. If we think about the root word in one of these, and think, focusing mainly on play, which one would it go with? It would go, of course, with replay. So I'm gonna stick that that way. Okay, number two, where are we? To freshen something up, goes with refresh. Okay, number three, to appear again. To reappear. The children hoped the magician would reappear. Is number three. Number four, to get someone back for something they did. Ooh, she took her revenge. There we go, there's our number four. Number five, to decorate something again. As I said, lots of this going on at the moment. Let's redecorate the bedroom while we've got this time on our hands. So we've got decorate goes with redecorate. Mr. Bullies had enough of redecorate. Number six, to bounce back. Bounce back the ball. Rebounds, so it bounces. Bounces back, rebound. Number seven, to give your opinion on something. So it's got, this is the definition that I've given. You could also say to look at something again for this one, to review. So to give a review on a show or to review your work. Number eight, if something makes you jump. Uh, this is a reaction. Well done if you got that one right. Number nine, to go back somewhere. Mm, to go back somewhere, to go back to a place, you would return to that place. And lastly, number 10, we've only got one left. Let's see if it matches up. To do something again, to redo, yes. He had to redo his homework because he lost his first one, okay? Well done to all of you if you got those, those 10 right. You could also write out some definitions of your own for any additional rewords that you've got, thinking particularly whether it is that back or again. Thank you for taking part in today's lesson. I've really enjoyed it. Um, a particular challenge for to set you. Two, two things that I'm looking for via email and passport stamps will be given out if I see these. If you would like to film your own homophone challenge, similar to the one that I did for our starter activity, I would absolutely love to see those and try and solve them myself. And secondly, what was the wa wardrobe malfunction that Mr. Bully had whilst waiting for the bus? What was wrong about my outfit? See if you can solve those. Keep practicing the spelling rule, the prefix we've looked at today, and I'll see you all again soon.